There's a little thought I want to glean tonight out of Exodus 33. We'll begin reading verse number 12. The Bible says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy present go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are on the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you for the good singing tonight. We thank you for all the good testimonies tonight. It sure has been good to be in the house of God. Lord, I'm thankful that folks uh, uh, unashamedly praised the Lord and unashamedly bragged on you and, and let folks know what a difference you've made in their lives. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd help us from the Scriptures. May you bless the reading of the Word of God. Certainly be with those that are working with the children and the teens tonight. Bless their efforts. I pray those uh, impressionable minds would uh, uh, certainly be uh, 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 impressed by the Word of God. May it change them. May it challenge them. May it, Lord, uh, insulate them from the wiles of the devil and the wickedness of this world, and certainly any of those precious minds that, Lord, do not know you in the free pardon of sins. May the Word of God touch their hearts, and may we see them trust in the Savior before it's everlasting too late. Bless now. Help your people. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we do ask these things. Amen and amen. In these verses, we find three emphatic positions. First of all, in verse number 12, we find that he knows us. He knows us by name. Look what it says. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou, sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. The Lord knows us. What a blessing. Knows the number of the hairs on our head, knows the thoughts, the intents of our heart. Knows our down sitting, our uprising, uh, knows everything about us. There's nothing uh, about you that he don't know. Uh, this may shock you, there are things about you you don't know, but there's nothing about you that God doesn't know. God knows how many atoms it took to form your body. Uh, God knows uh, how many white blood cells you have, how many red blood cells you have. Uh, he knows any underlying conditions you have that you may not know. And He knows your heart, which the Bible says is deceitful uh, and wicked, and no man knoweth it. Uh, you don't know your heart. You don't know what you're capable of, but God does. He knows us. Mm, there's another emphatic position I'm interested in. We know him. Look what it says in verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation uh, is thy people. Uh, we know him by grace. Had it not been for grace, we'd have never known him. But because of the good grace of God, He made a way to where we could know Him. We could know Him in the free pardon of sins. Uh, we could have a relationship with Him. We could know His will for our lives. Uh, we could know His statutes and precepts. Uh, we know Him because He first knew us. Mm, he knows us, and we know Him. But the final position I see uh, in here. Uh, I find in verse number 16 that we are known to be His. Look what it says. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not, and that thou goest with us? 
So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. You see, all the other nations knew the Jews were God's chosen people. And can I say, we are known to be his. You don't have to wear a neon sign telling everybody you belong to God. All you got to do is walk in the, in the, through the pages of the Bible and people know you belong to God. They'll hear it in your speech. They'll see it in your walk. They'll see it in your countenance. Uh, uh, they'll realize you're not like them. You don't participate in their filthy jokes. You don't participate in their crowds and around. You don't participate in their parties and all that other stuff. They know there's something different about you. huh? Sunday morning they got hangovers. Sunday morning you're in church. They know something's different. Can I say we are known to be His? So these verses realize, uh, reveals to us that He knows us, we know Him, and we are known to be His. I'm interested in a little thought in verse 15. Verse 15, this is Moses talking to the, to the Lord, and he says, And he said unto him, If thy presence go, go not with me, carry us up not hence Moses said if you're not with us I don't want to go mm. and so with God's help I want to preach on without his presence mm. now can I say that there are a lot of people do things in the name of the Lord without the presence of God in their life mm. you say preacher prove it I'm glad you asked me if you go and you study in the book of Judges, you'll find a, a, a fellow by the name of Samson. And you'll find that Samson had incredible strength, uh, and he had incredible strength not because of his merits, uh, not because of his life. As a matter of fact, you study his life, he was a rascal. Uh, uh, he had a real problem with ladies. And he had a real problem uh, that would cause God to be angry with him. But you see, there was a covenant made between God uh, and, Mo uh, and Samson's uh, uh, people, uh, his mother and father. Uh, and uh, Samson took a Nazarite vow. And can I say, God will never break his word. Amen. And God promised to bless Samson with strength as long as Samson adhered to that Nazarite vow. And part of the Nazarite vow was you didn't cut your hair. And you know the story. Delilah was hired to get him to reveal the source of his strength and he, and he made up a few things and, uh, and she got all uh, 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 in the pooch mouth because, uh, you know, he mocked her and all that. And when the, she'd call for the Philistines, he'd just tear them to shreds. Uh, and finally, she weighed on him so much and wore him down so much he told her the source of his strength. Uh, she cut his hair. Uh, when the Philistines showed up, she uh, hollered out, The Philistines be upon you. He jumped up and thought he'd take them out like every other time before. Uh, but the Bible says he wished not that the Lord had left him. The Lord had departed from his life. You see, he was doing things in the energy of the flesh, but didn't have the presence of God. And I say in our day and age, there are churches that have services without God's presence. There are people that read the Word of God without God's presence. There are people who pray without God's presence. There are people who sing without God's presence. There are people uh, 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 who do a lot of things in the name of the Lord without God being anywhere in the midst of it. Moses said, if thy presence go not with me, carry us, uh, uh, carry us not up hence. In other words, I don't want to go anywhere without you, God. Right. So without His presence. Let me give you a few things. It's so important not just to come to church, not just to carry the name Christ being a Christian, not just to read your Bible, not just to pray. Not just, all those things are physical things, outward things. Uh, and listen, those outward things are good uh, if they're motivated by what's going on in the inside. Uh, but if you're just doing the outward things uh, to try and impress God, listen, He's the one who makes sunsets and sunrises. You and I can't impress Him. Amen. Mm. But obedience is better than sacrifice. But can, can, can you get a hold of this? Everything has to be born in the presence of God. If it's done without God's presence... It's sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Can I say without God's presence, first of all, we're powerless. You know why there's not been revival and great revival in America? Because we don't have the presence of God. 
Our churches don't have the presence of God. And by the way, if revival comes, it's not going to come at the White House. It's going to come through the church house. And can I say that uh, uh, without God's presence, we'll not have His power. Uh, and it takes the power of God for anything to get accomplished. Uh, uh, listen, without His power, uh, uh, preaching is all in vain. Without His power, uh, singing is all in vain. Without His power, prayer is all in vain. Uh, without His power, you're giving money is all in vain. Uh, it takes God's touch. Uh, and just a little God uh, removes mountains. Uh, uh, it brings down armies. Uh, hey, it flattens out nations. Uh, hey, all it takes is the power of God. And friends, uh, uh, God in us is the majority, my dear friends. Uh, but without His presence, you can have a multitude and not accomplish anything. It takes His presence. Without His presence, we don't have any power. His power comes through prayer. Mm. But without that, what are we doing? Hmm? We need His power. When you don't have His presence, you don't have His power. You know, one of the things I love about our church, I love that our church is warm and friendly and inviting. I love all the personalities we have in our church. I love all the talent we have in our church. I love everything about our church. You don't know this. I know a lot of things. We got folks that can't hardly read in this church, and then we got one man sitting back there who opens the door and gives you a bulletin who's got multiple doctorate degrees. We got every spectrum in here. Uh, we got college professors, and we got janitors. We got everybody. There. But you know what? When we walk through those doors, we're all equal in Christ. What a blessing. Uh, and we can come in here, uh, and we can have a wonderful time in the Lord's house. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, the thing that I love most about our church, uh, more times than not, uh, 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 when we start to, uh, the congregational singing, uh, all of a sudden somewhere in the service God will show up. Uh, God will start touching hearts. Uh, His presence is made known. Uh, and God does the work around here. Uh, I love coming to church when He's home, and that's most of the time. But without His, without His presence... We're, we're just, this is just a building. It's not a sanctuary. Thank God for the presence of God. Without His presence, we're powerless. Can I say this? Without His presence, we're paralyzed. We're just misplaced. We're misguided. We're adrift. We can do nothing. Did He not say in John 15, without Him we can do nothing? We're paralyzed. You know why a lot of churches aren't doing anything? They don't have Him. No. Uh, can I say the Bible says they that labor, their labor's in vain except the Lord build the house. And there's a lot of people trying to, trying to do a work for God without God. Huh? That's like a, a trying to move a mountain with a shovel. You're not going to get it done. Hmm? But hey, but God shows up and He can do m uh, majestic and marvelous and miraculous things. Because he's God. But we're paralyzed without him. Boy, I hear more and more and more churches closing, preachers quitting. I had a young preacher call me the other night and, and uh, spoke to him for about an hour and was seeking some advice and some wisdom from an old preacher. And so I was trying to give it to him. Uh, and I told him what he needed to do. And then I got a text this morning. And he said, I'm just going to resign. Mm. Can I say that? This generation is a whole lot different than my generation and the generation before me. I said this in my Sunday school class. Can you imagine rounding up a bunch of 18-year-olds today and sending them to Normandy Beach and expecting to stop uh, uh, Hitler? Lord have mercy. We, we got them in the army now. They don't even know what their pronouns are. Uh, we got a commander-in-chief that, that's got Swiss cheese for a brain. I mean, we're in trouble. Huh? We don't have any more Trumans. We don't have any more Pattons and M MacArthur's. By the way, that's who I'm named after. My dad's name was Doug, but they didn't name me Doug because of my dad's name. They named me Doug Douglas because of Douglas MacArthur. Huh? And by the way, if they'd let him, he'd have took all of the Pacific, and if they'd let Patton, he took all of Europe. And if they let Schwarzkopf, he would have took all the Middle East. So you got problem when you get these politicians trying to be generals. Mm -mm. You see, they 
They just do what they need to do to line their pockets and get reelected. That's all they do. Uh, soldiers and warriors, they want to take it all. But can I say that we got generation that doesn't do anything. And it's filtered into our churches. We got folks that don't make a stand. We got folks that, that uh, won't, make, won't proclaim anything, won't set their anchor down on anything. Everybody just wants to go with the flow. And you know what's happened? The Lord said, see ya. That's why churches don't do anything. They're paralyzed. Huh? Can I say that's why a lot of Christians don't do anything? You're just trying to ride the fence. Well, there's one thing I've learned about that Bible. There's no gray. It's all black and white. You, you know, you're either for the Lord or you're against the Lord. Hmm? Uh, and he's either for you or he's against you. Hmm? And so without him, we're not only powerless, we're paralyzed. And that's a sad, sad state of affairs. This generation ought to be the most fired up generation of any church age there's ever been. Because we're the closest to the second coming of the Lord. We ought to be fired up. We ought to be ready to go out in a blaze of glory. Right. And too many are limping into glory. huh? Can I say without His presence, we're not only powerless and paralyzed, we're nothing more than a prey. You know why the devil's picking people off? Because they're prime for the picking. They don't have the presence of God in their life. Do you realize that if you are in the lap of the Lord, the devil's not going to mess with you? If God's all over you, do you think the devil's worried about you? No, he's worried about God. Hmm? That message that I preached uh, years ago on the lily, uh, every deer is instinctive, and, and foxes were instinctive back in the uh, old country, they used to call it, England. They used to hunt, they'd get on horses, and they'd send out dogs, and the dogs would stir up a deer or stir up a fox, uh, and uh, the dog get to yelping, and they know where to head to, and they'd go out and shoot the prey. But every deer had it instinctively known if they could get to a lily patch, uh, uh -oh, running through the lily patch, the dogs would lose the scent of them because of the lilies. And foxes do the same thing. And if you and I had ever learned that in the presence of God, uh, the hounds of hell lose all sight of us, they lose all sin of us, uh, uh, they've got to deal with the Lord. Uh, uh, the safest place we could ever be is in the center of the will of God, uh, and we need His presence because without His presence, we're nothing but a prey. And the devil's got a bullseye on all of us. Miss Cinder, the last thing he wants to see you do is get on fire for God. Because if you get on fire for God, guess what? That's going to rub off on other people. And uh, 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 some of them packets you hand out, people are going to say, hey, this person's got a touch on them I've never seen. Uh, they're going to read that material. They're going to watch that flash drive. They're going to say, I want what she's got. Uh, but if hey, uh, uh, the devil can keep you from having the presence of God in your life, uh, then you're an easy prey. He'll just pick you off. And to Cinda. Hmm? Cinda start acting like Mary. I'm just teasing Mary. Hadn't picked on you all day. I didn't want you mad at me, so I had to throw something in there. Uh, make sure you're still awake. You're over there acting like Ed. Uh, but without the presence of God, that's all we are is a prey. Do hmm? you realize the only thing that secures you and protects you and insulates you is the presence of God? Hmm? When God removes His hand from your life, what is to protect you? Nothing. Mm -mm. and there's nobody in this building from the pulpit to the back pew that's any match for the devil mm -hmm. you better have the power of God on your life can I say without his presence we're powerless we're paralyzed we're a prey but we're also poor and by being poor I mean poor in spirit we're miserable yeah. you ever know somebody is saved and he's just mad all the time because they don't have the presence of God Amen. well hey the joy of the Lord's our strength. And can I say, when His presence is real in your life, you're happy, happy, happy. Even when you're going through the storms, you got peace. But when you don't have the presence of God, you're of all men most miserable. Hmm? One of the worst things in the world is to be saved and be out of the will of God. Hmm? You get bitter, you get nasty. 
We've had people in the church before. You go up and say, hey, good to see you. Wow, what's good about it? Ah, 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 ah. I say, uh, you need to see Brother Randy. And then I just walk off. Uh, I'm not going to name any names. We had this one person one time. I mean, if that person was to smile, their whole face would crack. I'm not kidding you. I mean, just mean and nasty all the time. Lived to be a, a old. And I used to think, because the Lord don't want them and the devil don't want them. That's why they're here. I mean, nasty. Huh? Nasty, bro. Nasty. Wasn't happy unless she was chewing me out over something. Huh? I'm not kidding you. Everything from why I didn't get her Sam's card. I didn't know it was my responsibility to get him a Sam's card. But I found out about it. I mean everything. Nasty. That's the way they acted. It was bad. Huh? You know what the whole problem was? Didn't have the presence of God in their life. Hmm? No. Huh? You know, you don't have him. And you know him. But you're far from him. You can't be happy. Hmm? Huh? Can I say this? Life's too short not to enjoy the journey. The only way you really enjoy the journey is to know him and walk with him. Huh? We know that man's days few and full of trouble. You know that those that live godly shall suffer persecution. You know all that stuff. But when you got his presence in your life, that stuff seems to just kind of roll off you like water off a duck's back. Because you see the bigger picture. And you got the presence of God in your life. And you're happy regardless. Uh -uh. I've seen people go through some of the most terrible situations you can imagine, but they were so close to God, they had such a sweet spirit. Hmm? I think about Sister Gloria. Some of you didn't get to know Miss Gloria. Miss Gloria, uh, uh, to be honest with you, she, she was a lot like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. And somebody left a CD, or we was giving tapes out then. Somebody left a tape on her door, The Reality of Hell. She got it. She listened to it on a Saturday, came to church on Sunday, was here both services, came Wednesday, got right with God on Wednesday, called me on Thursday. And Miss Gloria said, Brother Doug, she said, after I tell you my story, you won't want me coming back to church. So she started to tell me her story. And I, and I heard about all I was going to hear uh, uh, to be honest with you, you know, she, she was more than a drunk. She'd drink a fifth of liquor every single day. But she got that tape. She listened to it. And she had been raised around church, but she'd never gotten right with God. And she told me her story, and I just stopped her. I said, Miss Gloria, didn't you tell me you got right with God last night? She said, yes, sir, I did. I said, well, if Jesus forgave you, and he doesn't hold it against you, why would I? And so Miss Gloria, she'd come to church, and she had the most wonderful spirit about her. She's one of them people never got over getting saved. Huh? Boy, somebody get... And she didn't know that it was okay for her to shout. But every now and then she'd get happy, and she'd just jump up and go, whoo, sit back down. She just... It was all she could do to handle it. She never got full-fledged Phil, but she got close, huh? Miss Gloria got pancreatic cancer. And I'll never forget she was in hospice. And I went over and saw her. And she had such a sweet spirit about her. She's laying there in misery and pain, knowing she's about to cross over. But she was so sweet in what she said. I said, Miss Glory, do you realize you've had this gene in your body your whole life? And do you realize if this gene would have come calling about five years ago where you'd be headed? She said, Preacher, I think about it every day. She said, But whether God heals me or takes me, I'm a winner either way. Right. Somebody dying with a, a miserable cancer, but was so sweet because the presence of the Lord was all over her. Uh, can I say, without His presence, we're just poor, miserable, wretched. Uh, I don't know what will befall me in the days to come, but I sure do want to have a sweet spirit regardless what falls, befalls me. huh? Can I say without his presence, we become proud. 
See, God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And when you have allowed something to come between you and God, has caused His presence to walk away from you, I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm just saying His presence is not prevalent in your life. Uh, 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 can I say that you have no other presence than yourself and you can't help but resort to being proud? Pride will rule, ruin you, friend. Uh, who are we to be proud of anything? We're not worth the powder to take to blow away. We're not worth the dirt that they throw on top of our caskets. But what God's done in our life, Blessed be the name of the Lord. But without God's presence, we become proud. I know people out of church right now. I have no doubt Brother Clint they're saved. On their way to heaven. Love Jesus. But they've allowed something to come between them and Jesus. And they've gotten out. And now they've allowed pride to rule in their heart. Even when you talk to them, they've got an air about them. They're like, well, are you judging me? No, I just miss you. I'd love to see you back in church. I'd love to see uh, God's hand on your life. You saying God's hand's not on my life? Well, I want to tell you a few things, but I know in the attitude you got right now, that ain't going to be pretty. Uh, but if you're out of church, then God's presence can't be in your life. Not if you know Him. God's presence can't be in your life. Because you can't live diametrically opposed to what the Scriptures say, which says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You can't be out of church and be in his presence yeah. mm -hmm. and see you get filled with pride and all of a sudden you know better than everybody you know better than the preacher And you know, listen the preacher don't know much and I did, do appreciate some of the accolades some of you said in your testimonies and, and I do appreciate that but really I don't know much but I have learned some things over the, over the years and when God gives me something to tell you you can take it with a grain of salt if you want to but I have learned a few things and there's been some folks I've counseled some things in their life and they didn't like it and they went the other direction and tonight they're miserable you don't want to end up that way friend you don't want to end up full of pride bitterness anger and nasty even your dog don't like being around you you don't want to be that person huh but I've heard people who's that preacher think that he is I had one actually say something like that and I said okay big boy go ahead Tonight, out of church. His children are grown up. They're out of church. Some of them in some bad sin tonight. All because they let pride rule their life instead of getting right with God and getting the presence of God back in their life. I thought about this lastly. Without God's presence, we're nothing more than perverse. We'll end up in some heinous sin without God's presence look at anybody in the Bible who'd been in the presence of God and walked away from it and see where they ended up you find a son in a hog pen you find Samson as sport with his eyes plucked out down there the camp of the Philistines being made fun of and you can go on and on and on even Lot ends up having an incestuous affair with his two daughters and has a, a child with one of his daughters who ends up becoming Israel's greatest enemy. Still is today. You say, how's that all happen? Just walk away from the presence of God. And can I say, when you're walking away from the presence of God, what are you walking to? God says, draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh to you. But if we're not drawing nigh to God, what are we drawing nigh to? Sin. The Bible says, for him to know to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Without his presence, we'll end up in a mess. I know preachers tonight out, out of church, living a life of debauchery and wickedness all the while trying to convince themselves they're still okay with God pride will do to you but living wickedly the great apostle Paul said this lest I preach to others and I myself become a castaway hmm? listen you don't know me as well as I know me 
And I know that within me I find no good thing. And I know outside the grace of God there's nothing that I could not do out there in the world. I know that. Paul said, uh, uh, I am what I am by the grace of God. Outside the grace of God, I know I can do heinous things. I just know I can. Now I say all that, say this, one of the things that motivates me, because I've talked to preachers who've gotten out and sin. You know why I don't get back in church? Because they're afraid they'll look around and they'll see people that's heard them preach and see the disappointment in their eyes because they're not that anymore. I've had preachers say, Brother Doug, I'd get back in church, but I can't be what I used to be. You see, they, they offer up all kinds of reasons why they can't. And that keeps them out altogether. But one of the things that motivates me in trying to put watch guards in my life and trying to uh, seek to stay in the presence of God is I don't want to disappoint those that have put trust in me as their pastor. And I certainly don't want to disappoint them kids that are back there that think that Brother Doug's somebody when Brother Doug's really nobody. But in their eyes, he is. I don't want to disappoint them kids because I know if Jesus don't come back them kids one day is going to have to stand in this church and say I remember the old time ways and that's what we're sticking for we're not going with that modern junk and what's going to compel them to be that is they keep seeing it from behind the pulpit and in the lives of those sitting in the pews I don't want to disappoint them I don't want to become perverse I'm not much but I want to be all that I can be for Jesus. And I can't do that without His presence. So God give us all enough gumption to be able to say to God, verse 15, And He said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us, uh, uh, carry us not up hence. That will be our, 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 our whole desire. God, if you're not going with me, I'll just hang out here with you. I don't want to go anywhere where you're not at, God. I just want your presence. Listen, why in the world should we ever want to do anything without God? Corporately as a church or individually as Christians, we ought to just hang out where God is. Listen, I'd love for God to grow our church to the point we've got to build on and build on and build on. But if it takes building on and building on and we lose God, I'd just rather have what we got. I really would. Huh? Because you can't bottle up and buy what we have. Huh? Trust me, I preach in a lot of places. They don't have what we have. I'd rather have him than have whatever else anybody thinks that we ought to have. But verse 15, that ought to be our underlying thought. God, you don't go with me. I don't want it ever to be said of this church that we're without his presence. And I certainly don't want it to ever be said of me that I'm without his presence. Because without him. Larry Seals preached it this way one time. He said, well, uh, without his touch, we're not much. And I'd rather have his touch than all the much that the world has to offer. Wouldn't you? So tonight, purpose in your heart. Lord, I want your presence more than anything else. Because he says, seek and you shall find. And if you seek his presence, you'll bump right into it, friend. And there's nothing like the presence of God in your life. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord for his touch on your life. Maybe you want to come tell him you love him. Maybe you want to go to somebody and say, hey, you've been a real blessing. God's used you in my life. Maybe tonight you need to come get something made right with the Lord. Whatever God has spoken to your heart about, you do business with God. You'll never be sorry. Draw nigh to God. As folks are coming, they're getting a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your presence, the sweet presence of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we got done with that congregational singing. Brother Ray said, boy, there's a good presence here tonight. Lord, I'm glad for the presence of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help folks now. I pray you'd insulate their minds upon that very thought. I want the presence of God in my life no matter what. And then, Father, when folks face storms and circumstances in life that are hard, 
I pray your presence would be so overwhelming, Lord, that whatever the hardship is, it's nothing compared to the peace and the assurance they have in Christ. Now, bless in this invitation. Do a work in folks' hearts and get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen, amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.